I'm Sean Fernandez and I work for the State of Utah Automated Geographic Reference Center. We're the data warehouse for GIS data and I've been working there since 2005. I maintained the real-time GPS network for the State of Utah. A lot of my job day-to-day -day is making sure that the system is functioning and that it's functioning well. Making sure that the outputs that make it to the, the field users are correct, that the accuracy is there. I'm, I'm making sure that the solution that's being provided through the Pivot system is making it to the customers in a coordinate frame that their system can understand and make the process as seamless as possible. And that's really the key to a happy customer. My focus at the Automated Geographic Reference Center is to, is to improve the quality of boundary data. So it really starts at the ground level, and that's why we built a G GPS network. We really want us to connect the ground to the data. One of the things that I focus on now is the public land survey system. Um, I have a, a data set of all the section corners in the state of Utah, and some of those are just taken off of paper, and some have actually been collected with GPS. Over time, we expect that all of those corners will be collected with GPS and so that we can maintain and um, preserve that data. So the way it worked is there were base station operators that already had a station in place on, on a building. And um, we got together with the Utah Council of Land Surveyors, the professional group, and um, we started asking each other questions like, how can we start utilizing these resources so that we can expand and uh, be efficient with our solution? Because we would have a station that was set up by a city here and one that was set up by a county here and they would be two miles apart. And it didn't make a lot of sense and so we decided to, to you know, to try and increase the, the, uh, the distance we could get between these. We started moving them out, building this partnership uh, and trying to connect all these things together. When we had the initial conversation, we decided that the state should be the forerunner, and that's when I was asked to step up and to actually help build the system. Uh, so we went to our state legislature, asked for funding, and we were able to fund building, building out a complete system. Uh, we started with 10 stations along the I-15 corridor, going north to south in Utah. And uh, from there, it's expanded, it's expanded out to um, a network that's now 100 stations. And we have multiple partners, um, people that already had stations in place. We've connected those stations into our system. And where we didn't have partners, we filled in the holes through funding sources coming from the state. So it's a pretty impressive system. When we first started putting the stations up, the user group became very excited about a solution being a statewide solution with one coordinate frame. And they really thought the idea of not having to set up a base station, carry the batteries out to the project every day, and to reestablish a project was a big improvement. And uh, over time, it's evolved where uh, not only a few people were excited about this, but now it's really the whole community of surveyors and users are seeing this as a great advantage. So we've, we've had great success and we're excited about the future. Every year, the Utah Council of Land Surveyors meets um, at a professional convention. That makes up about 70% of the customers that use our system currently. We usually uh, have it set up where I'll give a presentation at the conference. And um, we've got to know each other over the years, so it's really not me just lecturing to the group. It's more of a two-way conversation where we sit down and, and, and say what's happening that's good and what can be improved. And over time, um, us working together, we've been able to work through a lot of kinks, been able to figure out really good solutions that work for everyone. And the feedback I get from the users group, I then take back to our administration and say, this is really the direction we need to head. And so um, our, our administration has been very responsive and we've been able to do pretty much anything the user, users have wanted. Um, so our, our system is looking really good right now and I think everybody's pretty happy with it. So I think some of the biggest challenges that we're having right now in the survey and GIS community is that there's a lot of talk about uh, changing coordinate frames. The National Geodetic Survey is coming out with a big adjustment in 2022 
and there are concerns. How are we going to handle that with a GPS network? Are, they, are there going to be tools in place that, that are built into the system so that they can take current projects and then bring them up to the new coordinate frame? And our response has been, um, I think the manufacturers of the company have always been on, um, on the forefront of these big questions. And I've been assured that there are going to be solutions in place and that Trimble has been working directly with the NGS on how to handle these problems. So I think when um, the coordinate frame comes around in 2022, I think we'll plan on moving our coordinates um, to the new coordinate frame and I think there will be a lot of solutions in place for all types of users, GIS and survey alike. We currently have deployed NetRS receivers, NetR3 receivers, NetR5 receivers, uh, the new NetR9, or the somewhat new NetR9s, and now the new Alloy receiver. So we've just purchased four alloys and we have deployed two of them into our system. They seem extremely solid um, and I'm excited about the way that we're able to configure them easily and just replace the old system with the new. So Utah is known for skiing and um, something that we've been talking about is deploying snow plows using the VRS system. In some cases, we get snowfall that can exceed six or eight feet in a year. And so it's difficult to see the road when you get that kind of snowfall. So um, we are doing some testing now to see if that's a possibility is running snow plows from a VRS system. Being able to talk to multiple constellations of satellites. Um, when we hear about the possibility of that happening, it seems so far in the future, but the future is here now. And we're now able to talk to, you know, four, four different constellations, five different constellations of satellites. At first, we didn't really realize what, um, what advantage we'd get from that. But now we're seeing that we can work in tree canopy much better. We can start working up next to buildings much easier. Um, there is a lot that has come out of that. And I, I hear back from the customers all the time that there's been a big improvement by seeing these different constellations introduced to the system. So we're excited to see it go from 25 stations in our 100, net, 100 network to the entire network so that everybody can utilize that. Because in Utah, there's a lot of diverse climate, and or not climate, but uh, terrain. And when you're in you know, canyons and when you're in the mountains, you can have a difficult time getting a solution. So it's, it's going to improve the system that way.